Welcome to How to Add Reflection to Your Online Class. I'm recording this for an ETE conference, but if you're watching this at a different time, I'm happy to talk to you. My name's Christine Chipman, and I've been teaching online since tw or 2005, and I've been working on big ideas for the past five years. That is a reflection technique that I really favor, but it's at the end of the video, so you've got to keep watching. Now, before I start throwing in strategies or suggestions, don't try to do them all. Pick one. Perfect it. Pick another. Perfect it. I really started working on reflection when I found out about David Kolb's model of experiential learning. Uh, he said, Concrete experience, reflection, abstraction, active experimentation, and so on. So I know of an engineering class that started talking about soil composition, started playing SimCity, went on to interview a city manager. But I thought, math class just seems to go from class to homework to class to homework to class to homework to class to homework. And we finally get a concrete experience. It's a final. Where in the world is reflection? So I've been working on this idea and found this really easy to do. The easiest way is actually to just add the word why to a, a quiz or a test. What's the answer? Why? Explain why that's the answer. But my six suggestions or strategies Talk about the beginning, the middle, and the end of a unit. So, if your unit is pretty compact, ask the students to set learning goals. Let them set up a plan, and it, not, it we're not talking repeat course competencies. Ask them to set up goals for homework, or goals for uh, research, or goals for a paper. Or a project. If you do have introductions for, say, modules, add a quiz. Here's a module for me, and you notice that my introduction is a quiz. So in the instructions, I introduce the topic, I have a video because the vocabulary needs to be heard. Also, I like to communicate with students, I like to make videos. Uh, but, you know, there are certain words that just, they don't come up in conversation very much. If you read the word extrapolation, you might say extrapolation. That doesn't make a lot of sense. But if you hear it on a video, it, it really helps. I also pull a question from the end of the unit. In this case, it was a chapter question. Uh, but I don't ask them to solve it. In fact, my first question is, what do you already know? Well, in this case, the question had to do with multivariate regression. Well, they already know linear regression. So that starts them reflecting on what they already know. Second question, what don't you know yet? This is actually a very freeing question. The only way you can get this wrong is to not answer it. And then... What's your learning plan for this week? How are you going to learn what you don't know yet? So this becomes a personalized learning plan where the student actually takes control of his or her own learning. And this will tie in with what Joshua Eiler calls destigmatizing failure. He says that humans learn by making mistakes, but when students get into classes, even from kindergarten, they start to become afraid. There's something about a school and a grade that you can't admit, I don't know something. Well, this setting up this plan, this, this quiz, says, okay, you don't know. That's great. What are you going to learn? And Carol DeWick says, this is growth mindset to say, there is potential. Let's move forward. Okay, middle of the unit, 
ask for personal experiences. Sandra McGuire says, we can just throw a concept out there like a ball and ask, what does this remind you of that you've encountered in your everyday life? When the students hit this ball back or this idea back, this concept, they come up with the most wonderful examples and ideas. They come up with ways of thinking that you wouldn't have come up with, and they come up with the ideas that help them the most. So I asked students about derivatives. One student said, derivatives make me think of brewing beer. Well, that was not my idea, but it was his, and it helped him learn derivatives. We are working on unit conversions, and a student said, I went to Ikea and tried to buy a picture frame. They're in metric. My work is in imperial. And I ended up with a picture frame that was three times as big as what I needed. Again, that was her way of learning. A third person said, I went to flush the toilet and I realized that rate of flow is a rate of change. Um, in this case, it was a sticker that said, you know, eight gallons of water per flush. Uh, but none of us in that class are going to forget what he talked about. I like to ask students for resources. They're online. What did they find? Was there a study group? Was there a tutorial? The one that they find most valuable for them is online videos. So I create Padlets at Padlet.com and I set it up where I post first and then put a link back into Canvas. I set it up so that it's like little post-its that they can put in and I say, all right, you know, add a reflection. You found a resource, which is great. Why is it great? How did it help you? Um, this one happens to be a song from Calculus the Musical. I, the quotient of two functions. Okay, this, if it is in Canvas, sometimes they come up as anonymous. So I do make sure they put their name as the title so I can actually give them a participation grade. Okay, let's go to the end. And basically, don't forget your beginning. If you had student goals, follow up on them. Did those students uh, meet their homework goals, their paper writing goals, their project goals? I took ceramics. I had to make a set of eight mugs that were identical. Did I do it? Well, I made 15. <laughs> Let these students reflect on what they did and actually celebrate what they did to realize that this is a step forward. If you did an intro quiz, you know, remember I had that question, this is what you'll do by the end of the module? Well, here's my second quiz. This is what you'll do at the end of the module. And now the big ideas, my favorite. Trey Cox at Chandler Gilbert Community College was my supervisor for calculus, and he challenged me one semester to incorporate big ideas, and I didn't think I could, so I asked the students to come up with the big ideas, and I had them do, uh, every week they had to turn in a PowerPoint. They had to summarize what they thought the big idea was, they had to select one hard problem, and I said hard because I'm going to select one of those problems to be on the final, and they had to show the correct solution. So I had one student give me a PowerPoint. He said, I've been looking at the derivative of inverse functions, and I think they're like pickles. And he went on for 37 pages. It was brilliant. It was better than any textbook I'd ever read. And I took his paper to the honors department and he got a full ride scholarship. So since then, I've spent time uh, working on this and keeping it up. When I actually took calculus to online, I asked them to post a video because I wanted to hear their voices. I did. I felt so disconnected. And then um, I realized, hey, if I put it on a discussion, they can see each other's videos. And, you know, so I ask them to respond, and I get 
response is like, wow, I struggle with this. Your hard problem was my hard problem. And I took hours and look at what you did. This is brilliant. And others, you know, you used your calculator. This is awesome. And by having this feedback that, you know, not only can they see, but they can realize that other people struggle and they're not alone in this class. And that helps with the reflection. So this semester I tried something new. The first week they did a discussion where they had to introduce themselves with a video. So they got used to the video equipment and talking. And in the meantime, they did chapter one homework. So when it came time for, you know, week two and big idea for week two and chapter two, I had an example up. I've never put an example up before, but you know, here's my example. It's like a screen and a half. And I had a graph and a link and uh, uh, there was more down here and a hard question and the answers in a video. And so they open up and here's my example. And they all said, wow, you know, this is what, this is how we should do it. And since I teach at a community college, um, I only have freshmen and sophomores. And they were doing senior level work. I could pull their ideas out and just make a textbook from that. They really have done a good job this semester. So some of them use Screencast-O-Matic. They get to put their pictures in. Others take their phones and hold them up, use the camera. And it comes out kind of square and, well, rectangular with lots of white space. This student was just moving it in front of the homework problem online. That was fine. Uh, these two students had papers. She was very popular because she color-coded her answers. Um, this student actually turned her phone the other way, and so I had to tip the computer so I could watch it, but I could hear her voice, and I could see what she was doing, and this was fine. This student used some body language. She was describing the difference between a 90% interval and a 95% interval. And she could not be able to communicate this idea unless she had used a video. And I thought this was wonderful. This student held up a cal she she was writing down here, so he couldn't see her very well. And then she held up her calculator to the screen. I couldn't read her calculator. She didn't know that, but hey, she was working on it and using the right vocabulary. And I could hear the steps that she was using. So it's a way of checking things out, of making sure they really know what they're doing and not just copying answers from somebody, but they can explain it. So two minutes left. I've got a couple more ideas. Student journals. I haven't figured out how to grade this, so I haven't used this yet, but it's similar to a big idea. Case study responses. I got this idea from re the Reader's Digest where they say, you be the judge and here's the case. What would you do? Ah, perfect for reflection. Um, error analysis is not just STEM. Uh, what if you gave them a paper or a paragraph and said, all right, how many errors do you see and how would you correct it and why? Peer reviews are reflective if you guide them. The reviewer has to you know, not just say that was a good job. That was a good job because you could improve this because as long as they reflect on it and offer some concrete examples, it's actually a good situation. If you want to do, let the students redo quizzes and, you know, this is why it was wrong and this is the correct answer. Just expect it to take some time, but that's another way of reviewing. Uh, one of my past experience uh, experiments was, okay, what was a hard problem this week? How did you solve it? Write it down as a note for the final. I always let them have the paper to, for the final. And so that kept it going all through the semester. So thanks for watching. I know I, I threw a whole bunch of ideas out there. If you have questions or other ideas, or you did something, go ahead and re uh, respond to me, Christine Chipman at usu.edu. Thank you.